I'm still relapsing from the nap I just took. Um, so last thing we did, right, was, well, we did the, we're on case four of the second game. We did the first, the first trial. Well, we're still on day one, technically, trying to get that acquittal going. Um, let me just check some of the audio because I tweaked a little bit of the audio because I wanted to see huh, I wanted to see if uh, I, I didn't I, I didn't quite like the way the audio sound before so I wanted to see if I can get it to sound a little bit better so hopefully now it's not as bad well not bad it wasn't it wasn't really bad before but I just personally I, I, I wasn't a fan right so what the hell are we doing? <laughs> I'm not used to streaming at this time of day. Not really, to be honest. Um, how loud is my fucking headset? It's pretty loud. All right. So we have a 10 minute recess that just happened. We, what did we do last time? We accused, Um, it's only been like four hours ago. We accused, what's her face? Adrian. Adrian's being accused for the murder. And. And Maya's still fucking captured, too. She's still kidnapped. We don't know what the hell happened to Maya. Pearl's not here, but Mia's here in her place. And fucking. We have a new photo, I believe, which was the Silver Samurai walking about. No, not this. That's the crime photo. This one. All right. Okay, time to get your acquittal, Max. Matt, whatever the fuck your name is, on guard. Dude, I can't believe that, that, uh, I was about to say Andre. <laughs> I can't believe that Adrian, no way. Not cool and collected Adrian Andrews. She's your manager. It would have been very easy for her to pull this off. The only person who had easy access to, oh wait, that's, that's Phoenix talking. The only person who had easy access to the knife who used that dinner table, well, was her. So after the ceremony during the break, huh? She looks so, she looks so adorable. Behind that adorable demeanor is the face of a killer. I was sleeping like a log the entire time. See, she could have also easily planted the bloody cover, the bloodied, the blood covered button in your, in your, uh, pomica, whatever the hell, you know what I mean. Hmm. Because she was the one that came to wake me up? Then dude, you're saying it's really her? Yes, she's the real killer. She was the one who murdered Juan. But why? But why? Why Juan? He was so beautiful. <laughs> I thought she was buzzed with I thought she was buzzed with Juan. She has her own agenda. Her own agenda? What are you talking about? I'm sure you'll see by the time this trial's over. It'll be alright. I'll let you uh, I'll get you acquitted by the end of today. Get me a verdict that's refreshing like a spring breeze? Okay, Mr. Lawyer Dude. Phoenix. You think her motive is related to Celeste Impact's missing suicide note, right? Yes, that's about it. Miss Andrews depending on Miss Impact's as her strength and reason to live. But then Miss Impact suddenly killed herself. It sounded like she left a suicide note and the person thought to have... Uh, and the person thought to have hidden it is Juan, the victim of this murder. And that's why I think Miss Andrews get, got close to Mr. Cordea. Cordea, Cordea. Whatever the hell you pronounce his name. All to, get, all to get a suicide note back. That sounds plausible. But one thing bothers me. Hmm? What's that? Who was the first, uh, who was it that first told us about their relationship? Who was it, actually? Huh. It was the tabloids. Was wasn't it? Better stated Miss Andrew's dependency issues with regard to Wait. Huh. It was Edgeworth. It looks like she's still the one in command of the shit. Don't let your guard down yet. Or tell him he can set me up. But why? Why would he do that? 
It's so beautiful. Court will now reconvene with with that. Uh, wow. Court will now reconvene. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, if you please. The prosecution calls the witness sub uh, sub subpanad 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 whatever the hell by this court. Miss Andre Andre. I said it again. Damn it. Miss Adrian Andrews, the person who discovered the crime in Mr. Juan's room. But Juan, why? What's your occupation? I'm the manager of the defendant in this case, Mr. Matt Ungard. I see. Now then. Before we begin, Your Honor, I have one request. Huh? Yeah, sure. What is it? I'm sure everyone in this room is wondering the same thing. And would love, and would love to find out more about my relationship with the victim. After all, it was the topic of a certain weekly magazine recently. Oh. No, I have no idea what you mean. I've never even heard of Gossip Land. If the judge was ever prosecution witness, he'd do, he'd do all my work for me. <laughs> Anyways, I was wondering if you could please tell us about your relationship to the victim. Well, relation. Yep, I was seeing Mr. Cornea. I was also aware of the rivalry that existed between Matt and Juan. But this was a private matter between Juan and myself. Hmm. So it was a fry and bait matter. Or was it a bait and fry? Reminds me of fishing. But I... But I didn't kill him. No one is accusing you of that. I think there's someone who would beg to differ. Alright. Alright, you got me. You got me, Adrian. You got me, Adrian, alright? Listen. I need... A verdict. Today. I need an acquittal. Lives are on the line. I think we all understand your relationship with the victim now, Miss Andrews. Very well, then. Witness, please testify to the court about what happened when you discovered the murder that had taken place. When I found the body. It was time for the show to start, so I went to Matt's room. After that, I went to Juan's room. And that was, and there was his dead body. I was in shock. What I saw was naturally the exact same scene as in the crime scene photo. I felt as though I was about to faint, so I poured myself a glass of juice. I'm sorry. First thing you do, you see a dead body and you go, Juan, but why? And then you fucking pour yourself a glass of juice. You're like, let me think about this real quick. Sip it up. You know, sippy. And then after that, you're just like, I guess I'll call the police, maybe. You poured yourself a glass of juice. Yes, sadly I didn't remember not to touch things at, this crime, at the scene of the crime. And I disturbed the crime scene by moving this one thing. And that is when the fingerprints on the wine glass were made, Your Honor. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness, Phoenix. She's one cool and collected customer, and she has the brains to match. Yes, I know. In order to catch a person like her, you have to avoid head-on confrontations. You should, uh, so you should disrupt her pacing. Disrupt her pacing? She's the type of woman who's easily thrown off by things, inconsistency, inconsistent with her thinking. So you have to attack when she's least expected. The instant you let up on your offense is the instant this trial is over, understand? I understand, but I'm like, why? Why must I hurt the beautiful lady? It was time for the show to start, so I went to Matt's room. Alright. And what was Mr. Ungar doing at the time? He was taking a nap. He was worn out from his mini performance as the Nickel Samurai during the ceremony. Hmm, Mr. Ungar did say he was taking a nap. And I guess you could say it could not have been taken out of the... What? It could not have been taken out of his room, yes? Excuse me? It? What are you? Right? I thought uh, I thought years of school would have taught you how to construct a sentence. If you can't make a sensible sentence with the subject, then I'll make one for you. Watch. Did you, Miss Adrians, remove Mr. Ungar's knife from his room? No. Hmm. Subject, verb, object, right? Did you skip basic grammar? Grammar? Why did I say like that? Grammar? <laughs> Did you speak basic grammar? The witness may continue. Why you gotta hurt me so much, Edgeworth? Why? 
And why'd you do it? Bahua. As a friendly jester, Juan, Juan was to make an appearance with the other heroes. So the show was supposed to be a show of friendship, huh? Let her be. Press further. Is that the only reason? I beg your pardon? What are you implying? You had a certain goal in mind when you started to get close to him, correct? So perhaps you had more personal matters to discuss with the victim. Sorry, but I didn't have any such intentions in mind at the time. I can't get her to talk without a strong piece of evidence, I guess. May we continue now, witness? What did what did you see when you got to his room? And there and there was his dead body. I was in shock. I was like, why, Juan, why did you do it? We were in shock. What? Was I not supposed to be? Miss Andrews is a very calculated person. And despite how close they were, I doubt she had romantic <coughs> Oh my god, what the hell is going on? I feel like fucking I feel like there's like an itch in the back of my throat. What the hell? Let me take a drink of water. Oh my god, what the fuck was that? Jesus. <laughs> What the hell? Oh, man. I was dying. <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> Back to the situation I had. And despite how close they were, I doubt she had romantic feelings for Juan. Anyone randomly stumbling upon a dead body would be in shock. And you can't seriously expect that young beauty- A young beauty- <laughs> What? You can't expect that a young beauty like her would not be in shock. Somehow, I don't think beauty has anything to do with being shocked or not. Hmm, I see. It's like a dead body. Wow. <laughs> what I saw was naturally this, the exact same scene as in the crime photos. This is the photo you're referring to, correct? Yes, that's the one with the knife launched in his chest. And the guitar taste was like this too? Yes, it was open and empty, of course. And then, what did you do next, witness? I felt as though I was about to faint, so I poured myself a glass of juice. A nice glass of juice. Juice. Yes, there was a bottle of tomato juice on the table, so I helped myself. But you didn't drink any of it, did you? Huh? There was no lit marks left on the wine glass to suggest that anyone drank from it. I wasn't feeling terribly great, so I set the glass down without drinking it. Miss Andrews, I'd like to confirm with you one more time. When you discovered the dead body of Juan, you were in great shock. And that's when you poured yourself a glass of juice, correct? And what of it? My mind really was a complete blank at the time. Your mind was a complete blank. I didn't think that was possible for you. Aren't you rude today? I was so dazed that I made one careless mistake. That one. One thing. Um, never mind. It's no big deal. What was she starting to say just now? I'm not letting you escape from that. Miss Andrews. I'm convinced that you said... Well, I'm convinced that you said you made a mistake at the scene of the crime. What I really want to know is what was this mistake? Hmm, actually, so would I. I... I'm sorry. It just... It's kind of embarrassing. When... When I set the glass down on the dresser, I accidentally knocked the flower vase over. flower vase? Are you talking about the one on the floor in the crime photo? This mess of glass, uh, this mess of glass shards? Oh, it's originally on, it was originally on top of the dresser, but when I bumped into it with my elbow, it fell onto the guitar case. Why? Why did you hold such an important piece of information? I'm sorry. I thought that since the crime scene was already in disarray, the people would simply assume the vase was just another part of the mess. It looks like yet another fact has come to light here. Please add this and, and please add this and any else and anything else you have to reveal to your testimony. I'm sorry, but I have nothing more to add. I didn't touch anything else. I was the one who knocked over the flower vase where it fell onto the guitar case. Huh. Okay. 
Well, first, I still have my one health pit from fucking earlier. Kidding me? Alright. <clears throat> first things first. Let's look for a contradiction, shall we? We'll see what she can possibly be lying about. Alright. It was time to start, so I went to go get Max from his room. Alright. After that, I went to Juan's room. Okay. And there's when I saw a dead body. What I saw was naturally the exact same scene in the crime photo. Is it the exact same scene? Because if it was, then why is the glass of juice there? I felt as though I was about to faint, so I poured myself a glass of juice. I was the one who knocked over the flower vase, where it fell onto the guitar case. Okay. So that would explain... Empty. There's some water, but only on top of the lid. Bears can... Wait a minute. No. That wouldn't make sense, would it? I don't think that would make sense at all, right? The vase is over there. And, okay. Yeah, no, that doesn't make sense at all. If the guitar... Uh, if the... Uh, the uh, can't speak. If the guitar case was open, the water should have spilled inside the guitar guitar case. Why? For some reason, I can't say guitar. So, for it to only be on at the top, that means the guitar case must have been closed. Objection. Yeah. You testify that you knocked the flower vase over. Is this correct? Yes. And are you sure it fell onto the guitar case? Is there something... Is there some problem with what I said? It's not some problem. It's a major problem. It's true that the top of the guitar case was wet with water. However, that's exactly what's so strange. Miss Andrews, you testify that the vase fell onto the guitar case. However, if that were true, the case should have gotten wet on the inside, not the outside. That's very true. Furthermore, there's one other strange thing about this guitar case. And what is that? Let's take another look at the crime scene photo. The remains of the vase are scattered onto the floor. Oh, but they're not inside the case as well. What's wrong with that? If the guitar case was open when the vase fell, the glass shatters should be inside, not outside the case. Huh. Oh no. What's your point, right? And that's the case, uh, that the case was closed at the time the vase was knocked over? Is that all? No. Think back to what Miss Andrews testified to. She said that she said that other than the vase, she didn't touch anything else. Oh shit. Yes, that's right. She did and she did implicitly say that uh, she did implicitly say that she didn't touch the guitar case. But but this whole matter with the guitar case is dead end. The bright red guitar was found at the studio. It has no bearings on the case at all. That may very well be, however. Uh the empty guitar case does seem to have no relation to this case, does it? Hmm, it seems that there's no deeper meaning to this guitar case. Well, Mr. Wright, do you think we need to hear more details about the guitar case? Make her testify. The empty guitar case. I believe this is a crucial piece of the puzzle. Heh, <laughs> I can't believe anyone would reach uh, for straws like this, but it is you. I can't believe I'm doing this either. All right, I'll follow along for now. Miss Andrews, please testify to the court about the guitar case. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> Can't believe you're awake right now. I'll be honest, me neither. And I'm trying my best to ignore all the sounds that are happening outside my door right now. Because I do not have this room sound treated. Also, here's a quick question. How does the audio sound? Because I messed with some of the settings and I want it to sound a little bit better. Dreamt about Phoenix Wright. I wish I dreamt about Phoenix Wright. I wish. I don't remember too clearly because I was a bit dazed. I suppose I must have opened the guitar case after I knocked the vase over. It's not a big deal though, right? The case was empty after all. As for why I opened the case, even I don't know. But why? Why'd you open the case? Hmm. 
Looks like it really wasn't a very important point. This way, uh, wow, I can't even read anymore. This wastefulness is such a familiar feeling by now that it's almost conf it's almost comforting. Hmm. Anyways, I'll just go ahead and start the cross examination. Hmm. Using anyways to change the topic? A convenient escape for a weak man. How dare you, Edgeworth? How dare you? Not all of us can run away from our occupations like crying babies, Edgeworth. Alright, don't remember too clearly. I was a bit of a daze. I suppose I must have opened the guitar case after I knocked over the vase. It's not a big deal though, right? The case was empty after all. As for why I opened the case, even I don't know. Hmm. Alright. After you knocked over the vase. So, you opened the guitar- uh, the, I can't say the word guitar for some reason. You opened the guitar case then? Yes. Well, maybe. Maybe. Why did you open the guitar case? Huh? Miss Cordea's dead body was right there in front of you, wasn't it? I would think the first thing you would do is call for help, not open a guitar case. As the witness has said multiple times, when she found the dead body, she was dazed. So she was dazed enough to get up, pour herself a glass of juice, not drink it, sit it on the table, open a guitar case, no, my bad, before that, she knocked the vase over, then she said, Oh, my bad, I spilled water everywhere, let me just open this case. This is some bullshit, Edgeworth. Maybe I... Maybe I was curious to know if the bright red guitar was alright or not? I thought maybe the criminal took it. Why would she care about the bright red guitar? But getting back on topic... It's not a big deal though, right? The case was empty anyways. I mean, it's not a big deal. This is a murder case. We have to check every possible outcome. Was it really empty? I was just wondering if maybe when you opened the case, the guitar was still inside. How long have you been a lawyer, Mr. Wright? Have a little professionalism. The bright red guitar was found at the studio. These trials, these trials would be over in half the time if you were just pay attention. Yes, pay more attention, Mr. Wright. Sorry, damn. Way to attack me. My bad. I'm sorry, guys. Let me also save this. <laughs> Got my one pip of health. Alright. Was that because you were shot? Uh, wait, I love how she just said, as for why I opened the case, I don't even know. When she just also said, hey, I thought the criminal might have took it. That's why I opened it. Whatever. Was that because you shocked and dazed at the discovery of the victim's body? Yes, that's probably it. Probably. I'm not gonna get anywhere if I continue pressing her like this. The only way to make her talk is with evidence. I guess I should give it a try. Come on, Phoenix. We can't afford to let up on her now. I was planning on letting up, but... Well, I wasn't planning on letting up. She had, she's at her weakest now, so this is our chance. Yeah, if we had a weapon to hit her with. If <laughs> we had a, just tuck out a gun and pow, pow Yeah, you don't shoot the gun, you just crack her with it. I'm sure a weapon is hiding somewhere in the courtroom. Records waiting to be found. Okay. Don't remember too clearly, I was in a bit of a daze. I suppose I must have opened the guitar case. Wait, is it only three sentences, really? No, it's four. Okay. Huh. I suppose I must have opened the guitar case after I knocked over the vase. Well, that's... You know, that's a fact. Don't remember too clearly? Well, that one's an obvious lie, but it's too much of a lie. It's not a big deal, though, right? The case was empty after all. As for why I opened the case, even I don't know. Hmm. I'm gonna choose that statement. The case was empty after all. Put a Juan's murder. Empty. There's some water. Bears Corne uh, Cordea's fingerprints. Ah, uh, okay. Go with tomato juice. Bears Andrew's fingerprints. Huh. What if, what if the bottle of tomato juice was inside the case, and then you opened the case to get the tomato juice, and then you poured yourself a glass. You're a liar.
Oh, wait, what? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? What happened? Okay. There's no way there Wait. Phoenix, where the hell are you going with this? There's no way you were the only one who opened the, car uh, the guitar case. Why would you say that? But why? Why would you say that? It's elementary, my dear. Because the only fingerprints on this guitar case was those of the victim. Oh, yeah. Oh. What is it, Miss Andrews? You shouldn't assume that I must have... Oh. Man. So, if she was... I forgot. Because whoever was in the room was wearing the samurai suit. So, there wouldn't be any fingerprints because... She, uh... You know, if she opened the guitar case because, you know, she's wearing gloves. You shouldn't assume that I must have... I must have left prints just because I touched the case. What do you mean? What if I were to tell you I was wearing gloves at the time? What if I were to tell you that you also said at the time you poured yourself a glass of juice and your fingerprints are all over that? So you're telling me... You're telling me... You poured your juice, then slipped some gloves on afterwards and opened the case? Why? Pa, why would you do that? <laughs> gloves. But why would you be wearing gloves at that time? It was the night of the awards ceremony, so of course I dressed up for the occasion. Yes, now I remember. I'm almost sure I was wearing a pair of thin gloves. Yeah, because you were wearing the samurai outfit, you liar. Well, Mr. Wright, it seems the witness was wearing gloves at the scene of the crime. That's strange. That's weird. You weren't wearing gloves, isn't that a little strange? Why is it strange? Do you have something that would prove I was not wearing gloves at the time? Oh uh, yeah, of course. It's to go by your testimony. That you said so yourself, literally like, ten minutes ago. I have your proof right here. This wine glass. The wine glass? You left your fingerprints very clearly on this wine glass. Huh? Even if you took your gloves off when you poured yourself the glass of juice, wouldn't you think it was just a little strange? That you put your gloves back on just to open the guitar case? Oh! She dropped her glasses. I feel, I feel bad for that. Order! Order, I say! Looks like you hit the nail on the head this time. What do you mean? I believe the guitar case plays a very important role here. But it's just an empty case. I wonder if it really was empty, though. But the guitar, the bright red guitar, was at the studio. Phoenix, drop all your presumptions. What was in the guitar case was not was not a bright red guitar. You don't mean it was a bright white guitar? Wait, that's not right either. Hmm, I admit it would be unnatural for someone to do that. So the witness was not wearing gloves, despite the fact that on the despite the fact that on the case. Your Honor, this is obviously the defense's usual misdirection tactic at work. Steer the court towards an unrelated topic and lull us all into his misguided. Misguided? How dare you? No, Your Honor. Please recall that Miss Andrews had testified that the vase fell onto the guitar case, which means that the case was closed when the crime took place. However, it was wide open in this photo of the crime scene. I'm sure this guitar case has some relation to the murder. If you are so sure, White. White. Right? Let me check something. I'm gonna be really mad if this doesn't work. <laughs> I'm just gonna check something real quick. Uh, I wanna make sure that the audio is actually going. So I'm gonna test that out real quick. Give me a hot second. Okay. Alright. So, <laughs> just making sure. Because <laughs> for some reason, for some reason to me it looked like the audio wasn't going at all, so. Alright. If you were so, if you were so sure, right? That I'm sure you can somehow sustain your outrageous claim, correct? Please enlighten us on why the guitar case had anything to do with this murder. Uh, oh shit, you put me on the spot. How dare you, Edgeworth? Well, wow, how would you do this to me? Can you do that, Mr. Wright? 
Can you feel it? Can you feel it, Mr. Krabs? Let's so uh, let's su let's let's potose. Why was I gonna say that? Let's suppose for a second that the bright red guitar was not the only thing that could have been the case. The bright red guitar was the only. Wow, the bright red uh, the bright red guitar not being the only thing. You don't mean to suggest that the bright black guitar. <laughs> so, you intend to push your push your theory that the case was not empty? Is that it, right? I wouldn't say something I didn't intend to prove. Deflate, deflate that head of yours. You haven't proven anything yet. Now then, let's have it. What was inside the case at the time of the murder? Oh shit. All right, hold up. I got this. Hmm. Hmm. Yes. Hmm. I see. Yes. I see. I wonder. Picture of the hallway. Yes. Hmm. Yes. Hmm. Ah. Oh, yes. Hmm. Ah. Oh, yes. Hmm. Definitely. Yes. What can you hide in a guitar case? Like, I made a joke about it being the tomato juice, but I highly... No, it can't be the tomato juice. You can just order that in the hotel. I take a drink of water, my fucking... I'm having, like, this weird interference between my... My, like, my throat and my nostril. <clears throat> Feels like something, like... Trying to push through it. <laughs> Alright, um... What if... What if there was an extra suit? If you- yeah! Okay, wait, hold up, no, yeah! Cause... Matt was sleeping in the suit... And then, um... We saw- he was sleeping in the suit at the time the Silver Samurai was walking out of the- of Juan's room. So yeah, they can have a duplicate. This is... this is a photograph. Yes. But what is important is what's in the picture, Your Honor. In this picture. It doesn't take a genius to see what I mean. What I'm proposing is... Inside the guitar cave was the Nickel Samurai, the, hero very's, the hero's very own costume. What? What? But why? Why would he be in there? Mr. Wright, explain yourself. Wright, are you saying that the witness opened the guitar case to take out a costume? What insane point would there be in doing such a thing? That insane point would be to wear the costume, of course. Miss Andrews put it on to hide her identity so she could make her escape. After all, you couldn't let anyone see you leave, could you, Miss Andrews? I refuse to accept your theory. Do you have anything to support such a preposterous idea? Just outside the door was an investigative photographer who was starving for a big scoop. And in the end, she managed to get the shot, correct? You... You mean this photo? Order! Order! It, took, it looks like we've, we've wandered into quite another mess again, haven't we? Nice job, Phoenix. Well, you know my strategy. Speak first, think later. Hmm, so the real murderer was hiding inside a costume. Wait one second, Your Honor. The Nickel Samurai costume would have been Mr. Matt's... I have like a hiccup. Would have been Mr. Matt Engard's. Why would something of the defendant be in the victim's room? And inside the guitar case of all places. Hmm, true. This is a little baffling. Mr. Wright, the court would like to hear your thoughts. What was the Nickel Samurai costume doing inside the guitar case? It was a spare costume. Mr. Engard did not take his costume off during the break period. In that case, the costume we are talking about is a spare one. What? But why? Then why are you why are you saying that? Then are you saying that on the night of the murder, there were two nickel samurai costumes at the Gatewater Hotel? Yes, this is what I'm saying. And how do you explain the costume that was inside the guitar case? It, it would mean that the victim himself had brought this spare to the ceremony on purpose. But, but why? <laughs> but why? Why would he do such a thing? Wow, he's so beautiful. The victim, Mr. Cordeo, was the jamming ninja. Why would he secretly bring the Nickel Samurai spare costume with him? What would be the reason behind such a peculiar act? And there lies the sticking point. What? What are you mumbling about to yourself now? 
Have you just been rambling all this time without any sense of inner monologue? Huh? No, I just... <sighs> Mr. Wright, please explain yourself. Why did you think the victim had Nickel Samurai spare costume? Ooh, shit. <laughs> you put me on the spot. Phoenix, are you sure you can explain this one? Think carefully before you answer. And then answer your answer with gusto. I believe in you. Alright, this is what I think. The reason the victim brought the Nickel Samurai spare costume to the hotel was... Was because of this. Ha! Huh. What is this? On the night of the murder after the stage show, at the stage show, the Nickel Samurai was going to hold a special press conference. A press conference? Yes, this Nickel Samurai was supposed to confess something at the conference. I heard about this as well. For once, you're not making something up, right? But what struck me as strange was that Mr. Ungard himself said he had no idea he was supposed to be holding a conference that night. But how can that be? The way I see it, that can only mean one thing. The conference was set up by none other than the victim, Mr. Juan Cordea himself. Juan? But why? Yes. The spare nickel samurai costume was prepared for the very conference. Miss Cordea was going to hold the press conference as the nickel samurai. Oh shit. He's going to dress up as the nickel samurai and hold the conference. But why? Why would the victim do such a thing? That's something I don't quite know yet, however. What I'm concerned with right now is what he intended to reveal at the conference. The Nickel Samurai was going to conference. I uh, was going to cons uh, confess something. Couldn't read for a moment. And by confess, I wager he was going to reveal something about himself. Which means that Juan Cordea, posing as the Nickel Samurai, was going to speak about Matt and Guard. Yes, I guess it would, it would make sense. But if that's the case, that's not a conference, that's a public disclosure. Hmm. Miss, Miss Andrews. I can see why you're pros at what you do. Pardon? Yes, just as you say, the press conference was set up by Juan. Juan? But why? Miss Andrews, please offer an explanation for this. I, I was the one who asked to help set it up. And the person who prepared the second costume for him that was me alone. You? One had been ev one had been everything on the Jam and Ninja. Well, one had bet everything on the Jam and Ninja this year. And if he lost the Grand Prix, he was going to make sure Matt was going down with him. That's what he thought, anyways. He was going to ruin him, huh? It looks like somehow Juan had a uh, looks like somehow Juan had in his hands a secret so powerful that it would destroy Matt's acting career had it been revealed. What? And do you know what the secret of Mr. Ungard is, Miss Andrews? That's something only Juan knew. I... I don't know what it is. Hmm, I see. I've probably been coming off quite suspicious to everyone. But this is to be expected. I've been trying to protect Matt, after all. Pr protect Mr. Ungard? And yet again, another strange bit of truth comes to light, it seems. Miss Andrews, if you could please tell us the truth about your behavior. Yes, Your Honor. I understand. But well, why? Why would you lie to me? How would you do this? From the bottom I saw, from the bottom, from the moment I saw the crime scene, I had a feeling that Matt was the murderer. Matt had killed Juan no matter what, and he didn't have an alibi for what he was doing at the time of the murder. My thoughts were confirmed by the evidence, of course, the button and the knife. But I'm Matt's manager, so I felt that I had to protect him. So you put on his clothes and you walked out as him? How does that... Huh? This does... This does account for everything. Well, I am the logical type. We're, f we're finally seeing her true self. She's more nervous than a scared rabbit. If the defense can find the fault with the testimony, I'm ready to make a ruling. Please keep that in mind. Uh, please keep that in mind as you cross-examine, Mr. Wright. Looks like some somehow everything has swung the opposite end of the scale again. This just means I have to put my weight until the end to turn her logic upside down. Protecting Matt. Why? 
how to lie to me. Alright, let's see. Flying through this. Alright. From the moment I saw the crime scene, I felt I felt that Matt was the murderer. Okay. Matt had killed Juan no matter what. I don't believe that. And he didn't have an alibi for what he was doing at the time of the murder. Okay. My thoughts confirmed by evidence, of course. But I'm Matt's manager, so I felt that I had to protect him. That's a lie. I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna press it. I'm not even gonna press it, man. There's a there's a photo of you walking out as him. Why would you do that? Oh shit, that doesn't that doesn't work. Damn it. Never mind. Alright. Let's see. <coughs> Would you say it was your intention speaking oh wait. Wait, what? Would you say that was your intention speaking to you? Intention. Did I say intention? Instinct? What the hell did he say? <laughs> Don't confuse my methods of reasoning with your own. Oh shit. If you want to prove that someone did something, you need three things. Three things? A motive, an opportunity to commit the crime, and finally, decisive evidence. And if you think these three things through, the answer becomes quite clear. You should really- <clears throat> You should already have known that, Phoenix. They don't teach that to us in school, at least not from what I remember. May I continue now? Sure. Matt had to kill Juan no matter what. Bullshit. So, would you say this need came from the press conference? Yes. Do you know why Juan chose the event that, at the hotel for the conference? Because that's when he would be, because uh, uh, that's when he could cause the most damage to the public beloved Matt. Uh, uh, to the public's beloved Matt Ungard. And you knew that you knew of this plan, didn't you, Miss Andrews? Yes, because I was the one who set up the conference and prepared the costume. What the hell? What is my what is my dog doing? You good over there? You you acting weird. But I'm sure Mr. Ungard himself didn't know anything about the press conference. Oh, really? Can you show me any proof that he didn't know anything about the press conference? Anyways, the important thing here is that the information was not in your testimony. Yes, I agree, Miss Andrews. Please correct your testimony, if you can, if you please. Grasping at straws now, are we, Mr. Wright? All right. I know that his motive. I know what his motive was, but I don't have any right to prove. Okay. Any way to prove that I'm right? Sure about that? Uh, has Mr. Angar done something to hurt or betray your personality? Uh, your personality? You, you personally? Why do you ask? You were the one who helped Mr. Cordea with his press conference. And the event was supposed to bring down Matt Angard, yet you still helped out. The person on trial right now is Mr. Angard Re of Phoenix. Renix. I was about to say Renix. What the witness is thinking, uh, what the witness is thinking, helping the victim with the plan, is none of our concern. In any case, this means that the defendant had a motive to kill. Why do I keep doing this to myself? I don't know. Bah. What the hell? What is my dog doing? <laughs> She's freaking out. Alright. Sorry about that. <laughs> my dog was... My dog is like slowly crawling up to me. I don't know what she wants from me. Um... Let me see. What the hell was I doing? Oh, yeah. I was just, uh... I was just pressing her statements. So which one did I just press? The motive? Okay. But didn't you already testify earlier that Mr. Ungar was taking a nap in his room? Are you telling me now what, uh, are you telling me now that you two was, uh... <laughs> Are you telling me now that that too was a lie so you can cover up for Mr. Ungard? I'm not telling you anything of, of the sort. When I went to get him for the show, he honestly was sleeping. However, as, as whether he was sleeping the entire time, I cannot say. I was too busy setting up the stage at the time. Hmm. I keep trying, but I can't find no flaws with Mrs. Andrews. Alright, bullshit. I can't say the same for some people here in the courtroom, however. The judge is glaring straight at Mia. He's glaring at you, smartass! <laughs> okay, Mia, damn. 
My thought was com uh, was confirmed by the evidence, of course. The button and the knife. You can hardly call the knife decisive evidence. The fingerprints on the knife could very well be clever camouflage. Then, what about the button? The button? It's clear from the crime scene that the victim and his murderer fought. And during the fight, the killer ripped the button from the Jamma Ninja's costume. You're talking about this button, correct? That button was found in the pleats, pleats, in the pleats of, plates, plates, whatever the fuck, pleats, plates, of Matt, of Matt's Hakama, uh, Hakama, isn't that correct? I would think that makes very decisive evidence. Ah, oh, shit. Looks like you were outfoxed again, Mr. Wright. Anyways, the knife doesn't prove a thing. Please fix your testimony. I can't stand the sight of a man who can't gracefully accept his defeat. Thank goodness Mia can still look at me. With an icy stare, yes. Oh my fucking god. You're out to get me too, huh, Mia? Miss Andrews, for Mr. Wright's sake, please add this information to your testimony. The button was torn off while during his fight with Matt. How do you know that? When the ends of the threads of the button and the costume were matched up, they were found to fit together perfectly, or so I heard. Hmm. I've heard that before, too. But why would Miss Andrews know about the case down to such fine detail? Don't look at me like that. Just because I'm prepared and you're not. Hmm. But I thought I had her this time for sure. If there's anything to trip her up on, it has to be here. But where and what? Alright, but I'm Matt's manager, so I felt I had to protect him. What you really did was stab the guy in the back, didn't you? And at the worst possible time. Who's to say she really stabbed the guy in the back, as you put it? This witness can have disclosed things about Mr. Ungard at any time. Why then would she wait until, until there was a large audience before doing so? It's the same reason why Mr. Cordea planned such an elaborate conference. Miss Andrews wanted to cause Mr. Angar as much damage as she possibly could. This witness bears ill will towards the defendant. This isn't the Phoenix Wright wax, po what? wax philosophical power hour. And please, stop slandering the witness. As expected, Miss Andrews' testimony seems pretty solid. Really? Because to me, it sounds... Sounds like like wishy washy. Sounds like wishy washy. A little wash. Wishy washy. Wishy washy. Well, I guess we'll see if we press a little bit more. You should know this by now, but you'll need strong, decisive evidence to make her talk. Got it, Chief. I'm going to pin you down this time, Miss Andrews. I love how she can just read my mind. She's invading her privacy, Mia. All right. All right, Samus Aran, you're going down. Torn off during the fight. So this is the this is what we're targeting, right? Hmm. Let's see. The button was torn off Juan during his fight with Matt. Okay. Let's see. What do we have to disprove this? Hotel. Around the crime scene. Attempted, there was some wire. Hmm. Was ripped from his costume, is covered in Cordero's blood, found in Engard's Akuma. There was cause of death. Strangled with the scarf, then stabbed with the knife. There's the victim's blood. Fingerprints at the grip. Picture taken in the hallway at the murder. Now, there's no blood on this outfit. Well, it doesn't seem to be any blood on this outfit, so would this work? I don't think so, but... No. Alright. So that won't work, it seems. We need to prove that there wasn't a fight. How do I prove there wasn't a fight? <laughs> Do the egg? The egg? <laughs> Do the egg? You mean the button? You're 
liar. You lied to me. You lied to me, Ronnie. How dare you? How dare you? Why would you do that? How would you lie to me? Alright. <clears throat> so it's not... It's not the picture, which shows that there's no blood on him, and it's not the button. Could it be the cause of death? I mean, there can still be a struggle with strangulation. Hmm. Crime photo. This doesn't really prove anything for me. What the hell? There's a map. Tabloid shit. Conference. Glossy photo. I mean, I guess we can use the the autopsy. Yeah. This is the victim's autopsy report. It clearly states that the cause of death was strangulation by a scarf. Strangulation? The knife stab to the victim was done after the victim had already died. And what does this mean? Let's examine this evidence. This button has the victim's blood on it. Which would mean that it was ripped off the costume when? Oh shit, after he stabbed him. Yeah, you're right about that. After the knife was stabbed into the victim. Exactly. Which means... It is impossible that this button was torn off during the victim's final struggle. Because the victim was strangled to death in that fight. <clears throat> and... That's right, Miss Aunt Andrews. There's no way this button was ripped off during the strangle. Strangle? Struggle. Let me, uh... I'm sorry, let me check something real quick. Something's really bothering me right now. This... is this working properly? Let's see this. Making sure everything's going. Alright. Yeah, no, that's fine. Alright. <clears throat> let me, uh... Let me, actually, let me actually lower this. I feel like that's a little too loud. Oh, fuck. My mouse is going stupid. Cut it out. You stop it. There we go. <coughs> Alright, back to the problem I had. This button was, uh, was, uh, con uh, God. Uh, couldn't even speak. Was cautiously pulled off the victim's bo already dead body. Order, order, what's the meaning of this? What's the meaning of this, right? So what if the button was torn off the body after the victim was already dead? What does this change? Let me ask you one simple question, Edgeworth. Why was the button torn off? What purpose did it serve? What purpose? We know how the button was not torn off during the fight. So the murderer took the time and effort to purposely rip off this from the victim's body. That would mean that the murderer had something in mind, wouldn't it? Mr. Wright, does this mean... I have something to say. Yes, go ahead and say it, Ronnie. I shall listen to your plead. Egg. Huh? You're... you're confusing me. I don't know what to say about this. Does this mean you know what the murder wanted to do with the button? Well, I wanted to, uh... end the crime on Unguard, right? There's only one logical reason for doing something like that. It was to pin the crime on Mr. Engard. Oh shit. There's no way anyone would be blood anyone would put a bloody button in their own pants. I'm not sure about that. Maybe I'll put a bloody button in my own pants. You can't stop me. That's right. Mr. Engard was set up by the real killer, of course. Oh my god. And the real murderer is Well, Mr. Wright, who in the world is the real killer then? Let me save this before I die. Because if I get this wrong, it's over. Finally. I can't believe I managed to bring this trial all this way up to this point. Phoenix, you can't let your guard down yet. Not until the very end. The real killer, the person who planned to frame Mr. Unguard, is... 
Ha! One of the evidence is literally an egg. What are you talking about? It's a button. It's a button. You see it? It says button. It's a button. Ripped off of this guy. Oh my bad. Not that guy. Don't 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 mind that guy. Ripped off of this guy. It's a button. It's a ninja button. I choose you. You are Mr. Cordea's killer. What? What? Yeah. No way. Can't be me. Order. Order, Mr. Wright. This is very grave matter. Do you have any? Do you have any evidence that supports your charge? Any evidence? All the evidence points to Miss Andrews. What? How preposterous! You can't stick any of that on me. I can't, can I? Would you care to test me? Then, then what about this knife? The knife was used to stab the victim after he had already been strangled to death. It was used to throw suspicion onto Mr. Engard, naturally. The knife covered in the defendant's fingerprints would only be taken from his room. And the only one who had dinner with him and knew which knife to take was you. Oh! Masaka. Then... Then what? What about the button that was found in Matt's hamaka? Hamaka. This button was removed from the victim's body after, it had al after he had already died. But if the button... Then can it be... If it's a button, then can it be that too? It could be an egg button. You're not you're not wrong. You're not wrong about that. <clears throat> the only people who could have done so were the person who found his body or the killer. However, Mr. Ungar was the real killer. Wait, what? However, oh, if. <laughs> I didn't read the word if. If Mr. Ungar was the real killer, there's no way he could have put such incriminating evidence in his own hammock. Oh! Huh. Oh no! The only person who could have put this button into Mr. Engard's Hakama is the person who went wake him up from his nap, which is you yet again, Miss Andrews. I see. What about the empty guitar case? That's also another piece of evidence that incriminates Miss Andrews. That is a that is a picture of a beautiful woman putting on a ninja costume. I mean, a samurai costume. The costume was used to hide the real killer's identity as they fled the crime scene. Now, who would have known that there was be such a costume inside the guitar case? It could only have been the person who prepared the costume for the victim. And that person is you, Miss Miss Adrian Andrews. No, no. But Miss Andrews' fingerprints were were nowhere to be found on the guitar case. And it was you. Eh. And it was you who proved that she was not wearing gloves at the time. That's right. That's because she didn't intend on leaving any prints. If anyone had found out that she had touched the case, it would have been a they would have asked her why. So to avoid leaving any prints, she used a towel or something else to open it. But, the glass of tomato juice is a different story. Miss Andrews purposely left her fingerprints on the glass to show that yes, indeed, she was the classic days discovered of the of the dead body ah! and to top it all off there it's this photo a photo of the killer as they exited the crime scene no reasonable person on earth could believe that nickel samurai is mr. ungard it would be much too short for his own costume if that was him speaking of how tall people are miss andrews you're also kind of short in stature are you not P please stop well, how about it, Miss Andrews? Um, I've got her this time. Miss Andrews? I, I refuse to testify. Wh what was that? Th there's a law. It says I can't be forced to testify about something if it, if it can incriminate me. What now, gal? <laughs> well, yes. You are absolutely correct, Miss Andrews. The law does pr provide us with a way to avoid self-incrimination. By allowing a witness to not testify if the testimony can cause damage to themselves. What? What? Pleading the fifth is not something most people would think to do it on the spot. Actually, 
Thinking back to yesterday in Miss, uh, uh, Mr. Engard's room. Adrian Andrews. I yes? Think hard about what we just discussed. Think about, think about what we just discussed, understood? Uh, all right. That's it. That's when Francesca planted this idea into her head. She must have told Miss Andrews to not testify if things look bad. You did a good job providing everything, providing, proving everything up to this point, Phoenix. But there's still one thing you haven't done. Something I haven't done? <laughs> what the fuck are you laughing about, Edgeworth? What's wrong, right? Are you finished already? Run out of evidence? Huh? What is, what's so humorous, Mr. Edgeworth? I'm sure you realize this as well, Your Honor. But everything that's good, that a good lawyer here has proven up to this point is meaningless. W what? Everything you have proven is circumstantial. Circumstantial? Yes, circumstantial. You have yet to provide a single piece of def definite proof. Proof that Miss Andrews did in fact harbor a wish to murder Mr. Cordea. Miss Andrews, you you did want to kill Mr. Cordea. I believe this many leads. Uh, I believe this may lead me to incriminating myself, so I will abstain from answering. But Miss Andrews, if you do that, it would be the same as admitting your guilt. Do you think? Maybe so, or maybe not. There's nothing to prove it either way. Besides, you don't even know what crime I could be guilty of uh, due to my silence. No, she's taking that defense, that defiant attitude again. Mia, what should we do? Somehow, we've landed in the worst possible situation. Oh, damn it. I think we have reached a certain conclusion at this point in time. Miss... Miss and Andre... Miss Adrian Andrews has refused to testify. And the defense theories that she is the actual murderer has not been fully substantiated with solid, definite proof. But that's not true. In this situation, there's only one thing the court can do. And that is declare recess. Recess? I request that both the prosecution and defense look further into this matter. And at tomorrow's trial? T tomorrow? We don't have a tomorrow. If we don't get a not guilty verdict today, then... Please wait, Your Honor. That That's not necessary. The trial. Please continue the trial. What are you sweating for? He said, ew, why are you so sweaty? Stop sweating. Your client's getting one more day to live, isn't he? That's, that's not it. This isn't about that. Edgeworth, I know you know who the real killer is. Please, let the trial continue. If I don't have the verdict, then Maya. Huh? But it's impossible to continue as long as the witness refuses to testify. Now then, the court is... Is it not impossible for this trial to continue? Mr. Edgeworth, wh what are you? It's true, Miss Andrew holds the right against self-incrimination, however. If the topic of conversation were something unrelated to whatever she may be guilty of, then she has no right to withhold the testimony. Yes, that is very true, but... Actually, there's one little thing that I'm curious about. Miss Andrews. When you found the victim's dead body, you poured yourself a cup of juice. Y yes and? I can't help but think how unnatural that is. Unus uh, usually, when one finds a body, they're shaking up not to stir a not to staring a glass of juice. Staring? What? Staring. <laughs> so, my actions were unusual, but I've already... Before you speak, I want you to state that if you had a reason behind your actions, I would like you to testify to that effect. Testify? Your Honor, I would like to request that the witness testify again as to what happened when she first discovered the victim's body. Whatever we find out in this testimony should in no way implicate her as a witness. Hmm. I don't know what this is about, Edgeworth. But I can't get a good read off of him. If he's friend or foe, I just don't know. Nice rhymes, Mia. Sitting here spitting bars? That's crazy. 
The court acknowledges the prosecution's request. Miss Andrew, if you please. I found a dead body. Let's see. A glass of juice. I didn't really pour it for myself. I was surprised when I walked into the room and saw it that and saw it at that messy state. And Juan, he was sitting slumped over and tired looking in the corner. When I saw him sitting like that, I thought he was uh, he, uh wow, I, I, I lost my my ability to read for a moment. <laughs> I thought that he was dead didn't cross my mind. To be honest, I thought he had just fainted or something, so I went to pour him some juice. When I realized that he was dead, that's when I knocked over the flower vase. Okay. Hmm. So you poured the glass of juice for the victim. Why did you say so earlier in your earlier testimony? I didn't think I needed to include something so trivial. Phoenix, please be careful here. If you can't find anything wrong with the testimony, then there's nothing left. I know. Edgeworth, what the heck is going on in that brain of yours? Now then, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Alright. It's time for the hard part. <laughs> Glass of juice. I didn't really pour it for myself. Okay. I was surprised when I walked into the room and I saw the messy state. Alright, let's start... We'll start by pressing this. So, it was a mess? Are you sure it wasn't messy because of your fight with Mr. Cordea? I understand your frustrations and not being able to prove your theory, however. Before you go accusing people of crimes, go find yourself some evidence. Uh, and then, what did you see next, witness? And Juan, he was sitting slumped over, tired looking in the corner. When I saw him sitting like that, I thought he did, he wasn't dead. <laughs> All right. When did what did cross your uh, what did cross your mind? I thought maybe he had smashed everything up in anger because he lost the Grand Prix, and then felt tired in his rampage, so he decided to take a nap. Anyways, that's what I thought. I see. So didn't he? So you didn't think he was dead at all? To be honest, I thought he had just fainted or something, so I went to pour him some juice. Get, get him a little bit of sippy juice. So does this work? What do you mean does this work? <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, uh, you thought he fainted. I thought he was asleep first, but then the room was such a messy state. I thought maybe he had gotten into a fight with someone. And that's when you went to pour a glass of juice. Yes. He always had a hard time waking up. So Juan always had a glass of tomato juice to drink, like a fucking vampire. I see, and after that, what happened next? Hmm. Realized he was dead, so when I knocked over the flower vase. Alright. Let's... Let's try it on thin ice here. <clears throat> How did you come to realize that he was in fact dead? I shook him over and over, but I never got a response. So I set the glass down on the dresser and tried to pick and tried to take his pulse. I was so shocked and staggered backwards and knocked the flower vase over. So that's what happened. Yes, this is what it, this all uh, this is what it all comes down to, huh? This is the absolute end for both sides, and Adrian is letting her guard down. Phoenix, now's our best chance to get. Wait, now's our best chance yet to kill the prosecutor. What? I'm sorry, I'm reading this all fucked up. Phoenix, now's our best chance yet to kill the prosecution's case. Who uses the word yet like that? Is that a bit harsh? Miss Andrews, will you tell us the truth this time? Alright, so... My question is, is there any evidence of, like... Let me see. There's the crime photo. Autopsy report. Like, there was no fingerprints on the body. I don't think there was, at least. Picture of the hallway murder. Alright. First, let's see what our statement is. Got the glass. Pour for, she didn't pour it herself. She was surprised when she walked into the room and saw the messy state. And Juan was sitting slumped over. Okay. When I saw him sitting like that, I thought... The thought he wasn't dead crossed my mind. To be honest, I thought he had just fainted or something, so I went to pour him some juice. When I realized that he was dead, that's when I knocked with the flower vase. Hmm.
Empty, then some water on top of Lip Beer's his fingerprints. With that, when I knocked over flat. Okay. No. Alright, so that's not what we're looking for. Me and my one pip of health. Huh. Don't have any knock to the flowers, to be honest. Feigned something, so I went to pour him some juice. What about. Can I look at the glass again? Found next to the victim, filled with tomato juice, bears, Andrew's fingerprints. What of Juan? Tomato juice there. The tomato juice looks like it's not even empty, but whatever. It looks like it's still closed. Suicide reports wouldn't really help with anything. Strangle with the scarf. Time of death, 18. I'm wait, what? <laughs> she didn't notice the knife in his fucking chest? To be honest, I thought he just fainted or something, so I went to pour him some You didn't You didn't notice the knife in his chest? You didn't notice the knife in his chest? No? Alright. That doesn't work. <laughs> huh. Damn it. To be honest, I thought he had fainted or something, so I went to pour him some juice. When I saw him sitting like that, I thought thought he wasn't dead across my mind. Let me see. Maybe that's the statement I have to use the knife on. Gotta go see Court's party video. Goodbye. <laughs> Uh, well, go enjoy that, man. Do what you do, you know? I'm gonna sit here and fail the same check over and over while my dog bothers me in my background. She's, like, slowly walking up to me like she wants something. Shit. I'm really... There's the photo. What the hell? The knocked over flower base. Help me out here, Mia. Damn. She's letting her guard down. Didn't really pour for myself. I believe that. Surprised when I walked in the room and I saw a messy state. I believe. Well, I'm, I don't believe that one at all. Because you're the murderer. But. I don't think there's anything I can prove with that. There's nothing I can contradict there. He was sitting slumped over Ty lurking. Uh, tired? Tired looking in the corner. When I saw him sitting like that, the thought that he was dead didn't cross my mind. What about the crime scene photo with that? That helped me at all. Yeah, there you go. So you honestly didn't think he was dead when you found him? No, not at all. Even though what you saw when you discovered the body. What's the meaning of this? Isn't it obvious, Your Honor? There's a knife sticking straight at it. Okay, so I couldn't use the knife as evidence, but I had to do- What? What the hell? <laughs> Anyways, who saw this scene would have immediately thought there was a dead man. Huh? That's, well, you see. I doubt a single person in the world would mistake this for someone who's fainted. And then I'd so nonchalantly go pour something in a drink. Unless you're a fucking sociopath. Your point is? Miss Andrews, your testimony just now, it was all one giant lie. And your lie has proven one very, one thing very clearly. That you are the real killer. Caught you in your trap. Caught you in the trap. Gotcha. Cannot escape. Looks like the defense has somehow brought the ugly truth to light. The defendant, Mr. Matt Engard, is not guilty after all. That, but that's impossible. You're wrong. Miss Andrews, try to have some composure. You murderer. It wasn't me. It wasn't me, I tell you. It was Matt, I swear. He's the one who killed Juan. But you were the only one who refused to testify. Uh, testify? What? Testify. And your reason for not doing so was that you might end up incriminating yourself. That, that's because... Miss Andrews, I will give you one last chance. What exactly are you hiding that may incriminate you? I... I... I refuse to testify. 
Then, there's no need for this court to continue any further. Mr. Matt Engard's innocence has been clearly demonstrated. Is it... is it over? Have we... have we found the truth at last? What's wrong, Phoenix? Usually... Well, usually, the real killer confesses his or her guilt. And now that I think about it, this is the first time someone has it. Now then, I would like to hand down my verdict for Miss Matt... I'm telling you, man. There's no way. Like... Like, I know I keep saying she's the killer, because I'm just trying to save my own ass here, but... That man killed himself. That man killed himself. There's no way. There's no way she killed him. I don't believe it. <laughs> She's so tiny compared to him. You tell me she strangled the mess out of him? Uh, what? Your Honor? The prosecution feels that it would be premature to pass down a verdict at this time. Wh what? The reason is quite simple. This witness has yet to speak the absolute real truth. The absolute real truth. What are you? Witness? Don't you understand yet? Huh? I don't know who planted this silly idea in your head, but as long as you protect yourself through your silence, Matt Engard will go free, and in his place, you will become the guilty party. That... that's... that's a lie. I don't believe you. What? I, I was told if I spoke... If I spoke, then it would be all over. And Matt would never be declared guilty. What what in the world is she talking about? Has she lost it? I can't speak about it. I'm too scared. It's Francesca von Karma. Huh? Don't you remember, Phoenix? Miss Andrew's living by the <clears throat> Miss Andrew lives by gripping tightly onto the words of others. Because she doesn't have the strength to believe in herself. Then, right now, Miss Andrews is Yesterday, she was tossed a lifesaver by Miss Von Karma. Don't say a word, no matter what happens. If you do, Matt and Gar will be acquitted. Miss Andrews undying Miss Andrew undying believes in this wor in these words right now, and is clinging on to them. <sighs> then what do we do? This is the first time I've ever come across anything like this. But Miss Andrews has to be the killer, right? Well, we have to do it now. All we have to do now is get our not guilty. That's my only priority. It wasn't me. I'm begging you, please, believe me. I didn't kill Juan. Help, please. Someone, help me. Let's get there. <laughs> Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor? The court can't continue on like this. Therefore, I'd like to hear what you intend to do. What I intend to do? What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to say? Right? I suggest you think very carefully about this. I suggest I save my fucking game before they criminate my ass. Think about what the witness did, and what she did not do. And think about who is the real mastermind behind the crime. Who's the real mastermind? Isn't that obvious? There's someone else who could be ex who could eh. There's someone else who could exp eh. eh. There's no one else who could be except this woman crying over there, right? Come now, what will you do? What kind of man are you, Phoenix Wright? Request not guilty verdict. Force Andrews to testify. Mm, ah, fine, damn it. I have to win a complete acquittal today. There's no way around that. But... I can't bring myself to do it like this. Not when she's making a face like that. Miss Andrews. I would like to know what you're really hiding. Mr. Wright, are you sure you want to know... Are you sure you know what you're doing? Sure. Mr. Engard would get an acquittal, but in his place, he, uh, in his place, you would be found guilty. Is this... Is this how you really wanted the trial to end? But... Uh, be quiet. How dare you? You're trying to trick me. That's enough. I command you... For, uh, I, I command you... I commend you for trying, Mr. Edward. However, it's clear that the defense theory is true. Y you're wrong. Oh, shit. What a shame. Huh? I had hope things wouldn't come to this. However... You're gonna pull out the suicide rap, you son of a bitch. What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? Miss Andrews, since you absolutely refuse to testify, 
It falls on my shoulders to disclose this to the court. S stop it. Mr. Edgeworth? This witness? How should I put this? She has an illness. What? what And because of this illness, she has tried to commit she has tried to commit suicide in the past. Stop it. Please stop. No matter how much you want to hide it, it's no use. I have that evidence right here. Ah, that's What? What's the second part of this? That's the second part of the suicide report. The attempted suicide report. What will you do now, witness? You know what I'm about to do, don't you? I will now reveal this to the court. The true nature of the pitiful woman known as, known as, ah, oh, fuck, I can't say the name. I always stutter when I see it. I don't know why. Uh, uh, Adrian. Mm. Adrian Andrews. <laughs> the secret of her dependent nature? Having other people know about this scares her more than anything else in the world. Please, please stop. I beg you. If people find out, if people find out, I, I'll... If you're gonna say you would choose death, there's no concern to me. Oh shit! Oh, you're... Edgeworth! How can you be so cold? However, before you die... I will pull the truth from your still-breathing lips. Oh fuck. <laughs> no matter what I have to do. Edgeworth, calm down, buddy. So will you tell the court yourself, or shall I? Either is fine with me. I... I'll talk, but please, help me. You have to break her down like that. Nothing matters anymore. Her death is gonna be on your hands, you sick bastard. I mean, her death was gonna be on my hands, but, you know. When I first saw him, I really thought he had fainted, honest. When I realized he was dead, that's when I formulated my plan. Once I made sure there was no one in the hallway, I made a mad I made a mad dash back to Matt's room. And then I stabbed Juan's dead body with a knife and ripped off the button. Just when I finished and was returning to Matt's room, I had a bit of, of an inconvenience. And that's why that's why I ended up using the nickel samurai costume. Stabbed the body with the knife. But why would you do that? But why? Why would you do that? Isn't it obvious? To pin the blame on a certain person. A certain cowardly man. What? What do you mean by all of this? It might take this court a little while to understand, but... This is the truth. The real killer is Matt. That scumbag of a man, I'll never forgive him. Are you... Huh. So is there a possibility that maybe the reason that that what's-her-name committed suicide is tied to Matt, and then after that, fucking Juan killed himself as well. He's trying to escape his guilt again, just like last time. Oh, shit. Last time? So Miss Andrews stabbed the victim, Juan Cordea, in the chest with a knife. However, she didn't do it with the murder in mind. She did it with the intent of framing Matt Ungard for the murder. And this is her crime. Wh what? How is this possible? I mean, wasn't Miss Andrews supposed to be the real murderer? Mr. Wright, please get over your shock and commence the cross-examination. Fuck you, Mr. Judge. Alright, when I first saw him, I really th oh, Damn it. <laughs> I don't even think she's lying about her testimony. But you choose to tell, uh, wow. But you could tell from the state of the room it was in that it must have been a fight. Are you telling the truth? Are you telling the truth when you said that you didn't know he was dead? He had a scarf tied around his neck. But the scarf is part of the Jammin' Ninja costume, so... So I didn't think anything about it was strange. His head was also tilted down a bit, so I couldn't see his face that well. That's why I thought I'd wake him up and went to pour the juice. When I realized he was dead, that's when I formulated my plan. What is this plan you had? I knew right away the murderer was Matt. I knew because Juan, he was going to expose Matt's weakness. 
uh, his weakest weak point to the world. So Matt did this to stop Juan and silence him for good. That's when I thought I should forge some evidence and pin this crime on Matt. So the forged pieces of evidence were the knife and the button. The first thing the crime came to mind. Oh wow! First thing the crime. Wow. First thing that came to mind was to plant the knife. Once I made sure there was no one in the halls, I made a mad dash back to Matt's room. Huh. That's that was so you could get the knife, correct? The knife Matt used at dinner had his fingerprints all over it. I thought if I used that, then the police would certainly turn their eyes towards him. Matt was napping with his costume on the on at the time. I slipped in, took the knife, and returned took the knife. Took the knife and returned to the scene of the crime. And then I stabbed Juan's dead body with the knife and ripped off the button. Just when I finished... Oh shit, my bad. I was reading it like it wasn't the testimony. I was like, why is the words green? <laughs> so you were the one who stabbed the victim with the knife. It gives me goosebumps to think about it now. What a horrible thing I did. But at the time, I couldn't control my own body. It moved on its own. Then, when I stabbed Juan's dead body, I suddenly realized something. If I use the button somehow, it can make Matt look like look even more suspicious. So you thought to rip one off the thought you rip off the button and I uh, can't read, damn it. And you thought to rip uh, one of the buttons off and then plant it in and guard and, and, and Matt's clothes, whatever, man. Yes, that's what I had planned. But things never got that things never go that smoothly, do they? Just when I finish, I was returning to Matt's room. I had a bit of an inconvenience. An inconvenience. There was a woman with the camera at the ready, loitering in the hallway. I'm willing to bet my spikes that was Lada. There was also a woman with a ray gun at the end, pacing back and forth. That's Miss Old Bags for you. I had already been caught and made into a big scoop for a certain weekly tablet once. So I couldn't very well go out looking like myself and get caught again. That's why I ended up using the Nickel Samurai costume. You were the one who prepared the costume, weren't you? Yes, I took it from Global Studios. I also put it into Juan's guitar case the day before the award ceremony. You did this to pre you did this to uh, you did this in preparation for the press conference, correct? Yes, Juan wanted to wear that costume, and hold the press conference in it. He was going to disclose Matt's big secret there. But what is this big secret? That, I don't know. Anyways, I thought that if I were to live... Live. I thought if I were to leave Juan's room in the Nickel Samurai costume, then people would think that Matt was the real murderer. I was very careful not to leave my finger... Any fingerprints when I opened the guitar case. I absolutely did not want anyone to know about the costume. I'm assuming that the big secret was that Matt's responsible for the suicide of her mentor. I mean, that's the only thing I can think about. I think we heard enough. So after that, he went back to Mr. Engard's room and planted the button. Into Matt's, hum uh, into Matt's hakama? Yes. After that, I folded up the costume I was wearing and put it into a bag. Then I snuck it out of the hotel and got rid of it. My word. What does this all mean? Mr. Edgeworth, is it? The real criminal is Matt Engard. Yesterday, that woman prosecutor sat me down for a talk. Francesca, huh? Even when she's not in court, she's still fucking me over. She she said that I should, under no circumstance, confess to what I've done. If that if uh, if ah uh, wow that if I just kept quiet, that Matt would be found guilty for sure. I had no choice but to believe in her words. What this witness has done is clearly unlawful. However, as long as her testimony stands, we can be certain she's not the real killer. Wait, Your Honor. The defense still... Right. It's pointless. At this point in time, it's not possible to indict Miss Andrews or anything. Yes, exactly. There isn't a single piece of evidence that points to her as the murderer. This cross-examination of the witness is over, and so is today's trial. You couldn't establish that the witness was the culprit. Please let it go, Mr. Wright. But... 
Mr. Edgeworth, please place Ms. Andrews under arrest for the further questioning. Understood, Your Honor. The prosecution will arrange for her detention immediately. That is all. Court is adjourned for today. Damn. We couldn't get our fucking acquittal. So I mean, Maya is still... Damn it. Today's... Today's trial is over. And I didn't win an acquittal. Witness, would you mind if I ask you something? Edgeworth. What is it? Before you leave court today, I wonder if I might look at one thing. That card in your hand. It has my interest for quite some time now. What exactly is it? Oh, this? Miss Wright also asked about this. Although, I didn't remember at the time you asked me about it, Mr. Wright. I remember just now. I found this in the room on that day. The room? That day? Yes. I found this card when I discovered Juan's body. It was lying there, right next to him. If you found that card, next to the victim's body, I suppose I must have unconsciously slipped it into my pocket. But it's not as if this card has any relevance to Juan's murder, right? Yeah, I guess not. But it's still a strange card, if you ask me. But as far as I- as far as a clue to this case, I don't see why. Witness! That card! Give it to me! Hurry! Edgeworth? Do you have any idea what you have stupidly- Wait, what you have stupidly yet un unadvertently done? This. This can't believe- I can't believe you hit this from me all this time. I- I didn't mean to! What is this all about? I've never seen Edgeworth so emotional before. That card. What in the world is it? What does it mean? Oh, shit. Woo. All right. <laughs> well, now that is over. Huh. Now that that is over, I have fulfilled said promise. This is a perfect time. This is a perfect time for me to, to stop right here. Because earlier we did this, and I said I wanted to give it a little bit more time so we don't stop in the middle of the trial, but now this is the perfect time. We have investigation to go. We still have to look for Maya. We have some new things happening. So right now, it's good. It's good. It's a good stopping point. So, like I said earlier, going to be streaming at the scheduled time tonight, as always. And for tonight's stream, I honestly don't know. It depends. Um, it can be a multiple... Uh, multiple uh, can't speak. It can be a multitude of things. Either it can be Batman, because we still have to do Arkham Origins, or... Maybe we might continue with Phoenix Wright. I'm not really sure, honestly. Or just start a different game entirely. You know? Because we're not... We, you know... It's only the, uh... What's call it? It's only the 20 seconds. It's a couple of days before Christmas, so... Alright. So that's gonna be it for now. For Phoenix Wright. Next time we jump to Phoenix Wright, we're gonna do more of this. I mean, what else are we gonna do, right? But... For now, we must say farewell. As always, for those watching on Twitch, I would like to thank you for coming and watch it live or watching the VODs. Those watching on YouTube, I thank you very much. It helps out a lot. And I think that's all I have to say for now. There's really not much. So hopefully, see you guys tonight. And uh, yeah, that, that's it. I really don't have much to say after that. So as always, I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Stay happy, stay healthy, and take care.